get her face. So let's go straight into it. We're going to go and do the eyes first. So first of all, I'm just going to prime them with my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. It's a nice long wearing eye primer. It's going to create a nice tacky neutral base for the eyeshadows to apply on top. So I'm just buffing that in with my buffer brush from Real Techniques. Then I'm going to go in and set the crease area and brow bone area in place with just a matte white eyeshadow. I'm using the one from Makeup Geek in the shade White Lies. And I'm literally just using the tiniest amount and setting, like I said, the crease and brow bone area, not touching the lid. I want the lid to stay tacky so that the eyeshadows can grip to it a lot more better. Next, I'm going to apply a transition color and I'm using these two brown shades. I didn't realize I was so zoomed in, right? And I was like, holy crap, I need to zoom out. So that's why I have two different tech camera angles. I'm applying the crease color, but you guys know the gist. Just apply that through the crease and outer me. Next, we're going in with a slightly deeper brown shade. This is from the same palette, the 350 Morphe palette. Um, basically, all I'm doing is just applying a little bit darker shades each time. If you guys are ones who struggle with blending and applying eyeshadow, the trick is to start with a lighter shade of the same kind of color range and just slightly darker as you go along through the crease so that it kind of creates a nice soft gradient. That'll help create a nice seamless blend for you guys. Oh, and I'm just going back in with the previous brown, like the um, the transition colors to blend out the edges and create a soft blend. Just going back and forth between the colors helps create a nice soft blend as well. Then I'm going in, as you can see here, and grabbing another brown shade, slightly deeper as well, and applying that through the crease as well. We're creating a, like, halo eye, guys, so you want to just place this from the inner and outer corners and then bring it through the crease so it rounds the eye out. I'm really focusing that product on the inner part of the eye, as you can see, so I can round out the eye. It's not so elongated. It's more rounded to kind of complement that halo eye shape. Then I go back in with the previous shades that we used before to soften the edges as we go along so there's no harsh lines and it doesn't look choppy. Next I'm going in with these really deep brown shades. I like to use two to kind of help it blend together more seamlessly. So I'm going in with a pencil brush and applying this on my outer corner and inner corner and just bringing whatever's left through the crease. Um, I like to really round out the eye shape so you can see here I'm just really focusing it uh, creating the shape that I want and building on that color and because we didn't set that um, lid in place before the shadows should really stick to the tacky base and look really pigmented and like we've been doing this whole eye look I go back in with the previous shades and blend out any harsh lines so there's a nice soft gradient and it's nice and smoky girlfriend to kind of create that spotlightish like halo eye look I'm going in with some concealer on a eye concealer brush and I just apply it on the very center of the lid and not adding any extra product to the brush. I'm just kind of carving out the center and buffing out the edges of that um, concealer so it kind of fades into the browns, if that makes sense. If you have too much product on the brush, it can kind of, it just doesn't like blend in as well as like really kind of pigmented. It doesn't have that faded effect basically, so I just like to use a little bit of product and work with that. Then I go back in with a deep, the deep brown shade, just the deep one, and I go in and pack that on the inner and outer corner. Don't bother setting the concealer because we're just going to use that as like a tacky base as well to really adhere those shadows onto it. Then I go in with a spotliner brush and really carve out the crease just above where we place the concealer so that it's nice and carved out and really structured on that good step. Then I go in with a pencil brush on that previous brown shade that we used and buffed out the edges and I go back in and just like buff out the edges of that too but I couldn't be bothered to show the clip guys but that's what I did. <laughs> then I go in with a pencil brush and that deep brown shade and I kind of use the pencil brush to um, build up that brown but also blend it through the crease because I felt like it kind of got blended away so I want to use a pencil brush and use a light hand and just blended it out as I packed it on. Next I'm grabbing this gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous eyeshadow it's a nice shimmery shade. It's got a pinky, kind of champagne-y tone to it. I'm packing this on the center of the lid, just leaving the crease area blank because we're going to apply a lighter shimmery shade up there to kind of mimic that spotlight halo eye. But I just place that all over the center. Next, I spritz my brush with some 
um, finishing spray. I used the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray. You guys can use Fix Plus if you want. And I applied Shimmer Shimmer to the very top part of that concealer area, right in the crease. I'm really carving it out. I spritz my brush so I have more control over the application of the eyeshadow. So I can really create that nice sharp line. And also so that the sh shadow applies more foiled and pigmented. Then I go back in with some of that deep brown shade and carve out the crease again. So it's nice and deep. I want a nice deep crease. And I also brought some on the outer and inner corner as well. Next I'm grabbing that lighter brown shade of the two deep browns. And I'm bringing that where the brown meets the shimmery shade in between those two shadows to kind of transition them more softly so there's no harsh lines. Then I go back in with Shimmer Shimmer and I spritz my brush again for this and I just apply Shimmer Shimmer on the center of the lid again to kind of bring some of that color back because it did get blended away. And I recarved out the top part of the crease just in case I like blended away when I was applying that brown there. I'm just kind of bringing it back. Next for the like the glitter cut crease kind of thing, I'm going in with my Revlon Colorstay glitter stick thing and I'm play, applying it in the, the crease area just above that spotlight halo eye so we're not starting from the inner and outer corner we're just applying it to the center of the crease. I'm kind of applying it over the brown but not all over the brown just above where shimmer shimmer and the brown meet and I kind of taper it on the inner and outer corner so it's not such a harsh line I kind of just did a couple dots here and there but I did a couple layers so that the glitter really stood out and looked really pigmented. I loved how it turned out. Oh, and then the glitter is in the shade Topaz Twinkle, by the way, just in case you were curious. Then I applied some um, mascara and lashes. And the lashes I went in with today are the Icona lashes in the shade um, Make Him His Miss Me. I'm thinking, like, looking back on this, I'd rather have used um, lashes that started, were short on the inner and outer corner and longest in the center to kind of complement that round eye look but I was in a rush I was getting ready to go out so I was like I'll just grab these lashes they're nice and wispy and like don't get me wrong I did like them but yeah something with a short inner and out of corner would have been better for the eye look anyways moving on to the face I'm going in and prying my face with my pure 100% pure mattifying primer and applying that all over the skin then I'm going to take my MAC soft ochre paint pot again it's an eyeshadow base and I'm using this to just apply over any areas that I tend to get fading or patchiness. It's going to create a nice base so that in case the, I, the, 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 <laughs> in case the foundation does fade in any of these areas, there's like a base underneath. So it kind of, it's like extra prote protection against that, I guess, if that makes sense. Then I just set my face very, like, very lightly with some translucent powder to kind of stop the oil seeping through and getting that greasy finish to my face. And I set my face in place with some finishing spray. Next, I know I'm being like an extra glam bish today, but I'm going in with three foundations. This is totally unnecessary. I just went in because I couldn't quite find a shade that matched me. I used the matte and poreless to create a matte and poreless finish, but then I went in with the other two to kind of get the right shade for me. I used the color stay, color, sorry, I used the Cover Girl Photo Ready Finish, I think that's the foundation called, something like that in the shade medium beige and then the EX1 Invisiware foundation in the shade F200 to kind of get my right shade. I know it still wasn't, wasn't quite right for me. I'm still working on finding the right shade, but it was close enough. For concealer, I'm going in with my LA Girl Pro Conceal in the shade Creamy Beige and highlighting under my eyes or whilst concealing and also the center of my face and also under the cheekbones to highlight and really carve them out, girl. Get that chiseled look. Then I blend it in with my beauty sponge. Next I'm going in and setting my under eyes with some pressed powder. This is the Eclipse Blur Powder in the shade 21 and I'm pressing it into the skin under the eyes over the pore areas and around my nose and anywhere basically that I concealed I'm pressing this pressed powder into the skin to really lock my makeup in and I know it won't move or budge throughout the day. So I was going out and I wore this for a few hours so this is like my really like adhesive makeup look like I really want it to stick I'll use a lot of powders and things as we can see here I set it in place and then I go in with my Laura Mercier translucent powder and then I set that in place as well to really lock that base in and it won't budge hun. it won't budge trust me it was like glue 
Next, to go on with the eyes again, I'm going in with my Makeup Geek Espresso um, Eye Curl. It's a nice brown shade, and I'm applying this to my waterline and also on the outer corner lash line. Then I go in with that deep brown shade, and I'm just kind of applying that over the eye curl and buffing it towards the inner corner of my eyes to really smoke out that bottom lash line. Then I'm going in with a lighter brown shade on a pencil brush, and I'm buffing out that deep brown to really smoke it out. Don't be afraid to be heavy handed guys. I really smoked out my bottom lash line. I kind of created like an eye bag look on the bottom lash line. I really like that for like a heavy smoky eye look when I'm going out clubbing or it's like a nighttime glam. I'll do a really heavy under eye. Then I go in with those transition colors to buff out the edges of those browns so there's no harsh lines and it fades into the skin. For the inner corner highlight I'm going in with Shimmer Shimmer and Ice Queen. And I'm applying that to my inner corners and slightly underneath the bottom lash line. And voila, hun, my eyes are done. We are on a roll today. For contouring, I looked a little bit matte and flat. And I was like, oh, yeah, I need to bring a bit of shape back to thy face. So I went in and contoured with my Makeup Geek contour powder in the shade Breakup. I also contoured the nose and, you know, all those kind of good areas, cheekbones, forehead, all that stuff. Then I went in and bronzed. I used my Barbados Babe shade from Missilin and I applied this with my Chi Chi bronzer brush. Like, wow, I'm actually using this to bronze my face. I never do. But I actually really like the finish of it. I'm going to use this brush more. I just applied this over all the places I contoured to also help blend in that contour so it wasn't harsh. I wasn't a bit of a rush. So I didn't really blend out that contour that well. So I bronzed the skin, but I also kind of used it to blend out that contour powder. And also, don't forget to bring that powder down like the bronzer down your neck so that it's kind of even toned all on the body for blush today i went in with the infatuation shade from makeup geek it's a gorgeous muted rosy tone oh so pretty and i applied this to the contours of my face and i go in for highlight today and i went i was like i'll just keep it simple i'll go in with my violet voss palette in the shade moon gleam i believe and i apply this to all the high points of my face and I also applied it to my brow bone as well because I did, didn't do a brow bone highlight before and I was like, it needs one. And I used that and I was like, it ties in well with the face. And then I set my face in place to really lock all that stuff in so it won't move. For lips today, I'm going in with my Clear Message Zoeva Liquid Lipstick. It's gorgeous, like, nudie brown shade kind of thing. And then over top, I wanted a glossy finish, so I went in with my Bonjourous Paris 3D Effect um, lip gloss in the shade Rose Romantic. And guys, that finishes today's look. I really hope you enjoyed today's makeup look. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up for me. That really helps me out because I know what videos you like. And if you did want to comment anything below, I'd love to read them. I love your comments. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you in my next video. Have an amazing day. I love you all so, so much. And I'll see you soon.